three, two, one. The date was January 19th, 2006, Cape Canaveral, Florida. A spacecraft the size of a grand piano left Earth on top of a rocket traveling 36,000 miles per hour. This is New Horizons. It's a NASA probe, and its mission is to complete our initial tour of the solar system by flying past Pluto and its moons. On board are seven scientific instruments, a generator fueled by decaying plutonium, and a few other things. Uh, it has a container filled with the ashes of Clyde Tamba, that's the astronomer who discovered Pluto back in 1930. It has two American flags, two state quarters from Florida and Maryland, a CD-ROM filled with the names of 400,000 people who signed up back in 2005, a CD-ROM with pictures of the New Horizons team, a piece of Spaceship One, that's the first privately owned spacecraft, and a US stamp from 1991 that says Pluto, not yet explored. So New Horizons has been flying for more than nine years now, and its date with Pluto has finally arrived. To understand how big this is, you have to get that Pluto is really far away. It's really, really far away. Billions of miles away. So back in grade school, when we modeled the solar system, it kind of looked like this, but actually this is a huge lie. Okay, so if Earth were the size of a basketball, Pluto would be the size of a golf ball. And at that same scale, the distance between them... Okay, tell me when to stop. Keep going. Keep going. Okay, now go outside. Get on a train. Wait, what? The golf ball would be over 50 miles away. Holy Yeah, and that's at its closest distance from us. And at the same scale, New Horizons, NASA's robot, would be a tiny fraction of the size of a grain of sand. And despite this immense distance, NASA's engineers have successfully guided New Horizons toward its target, and they're retrieving data back over radio waves, very slowly. Uh, the radio waves take four and a half hours to come all the way from New Horizons to us. NASA has to use 200-foot-wide antennas just to even detect the signal. And the download speed is one kilobit per second. So one kilobit per second, how slow is that exactly? So if you had, a, if you had an image that's 1024 pixels wide, it would take about 40 minutes just to download it. That's 50 times slower than your dial-up modem from the 90s. And one of the key pieces of data that New Horizons will be retrieving is good photos of Pluto. Right now, we don't have any good photos of Pluto. The best things we have from the Hubble Space Telescope, it still looks like a blurry blob. But New Horizons is going to return historic, high-definition photos of Pluto. It already got some great shots of Jupiter when it flew by in 2007 to use the giant planet's gravity as a slingshot. So right now, New Horizons is traveling at over 31,000 miles per hour. And it's pretty much used up all its fuel, so it can't slow down as it approaches the target. So all of these observations are going to be happening really quickly. And after that? After that, New Horizons is just going to keep going. Then in 2019, engineers are going to fly it past another small icy object at the edge of the solar system to collect more data. And as for Pluto, it'll continue on around the sun, taking 248 years to complete one revolution. So that means the entire history of the United States has unfolded in the time it's taken Pluto to orbit the sun once. The last time Pluto was in its current position, we didn't understand how species evolved or how germs transmitted diseases. Wow. Aviation was still decades away, and spaceflight wouldn't happen for nearly 200 years. But this time around, when Pluto finishes its orbit, it's going to be met by a tiny robot sent by a curious species of apes living on a planet billions of miles away. <laughs>